there he is. Uh, Yay. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead for go ahead and try and do an intro here. Video games. What a fucking what a concept, you know. <laughs> we got all, honestly. It's a bit of an interesting thing over like the past thirty or forty years on how video games have evolved. It's evolved as a medium. I mean, looking at how far it's gone. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and discuss all of this here with a guest over here. I am Alex Stidham. Hey, Joe, you mind introducing yourself and Hi. tell him? Go ahead, explain like what you do here. What you do? For sure. So I'm Hedgehog. I go by an extremely agitated Hedgehog on YouTube. Um, I am primarily a voice actress and a writer. Um, I particularly do a lot of fan dubs of various uh, video games that don't have voice acting in them. And I utilize a whole cast of people to help me with that. Um, so I'm generally an internet personality slash voice actor. Um, but I do a lot of stuff with video games in general. So, yeah. Yep, that's her, and I'm over here basically just hosting everything. Yeah. So, a quick talk before we actually go ahead and dive into the whole thing of video video games. We're gonna gonna go ahead and hit you with a little bit of media and society lessons that from a bit earlier in the year that for the class. Um, so we're gonna be applying. A little bit of quick knowledge. We're going to be applying the a couple of the teachings of McLuhan. He was a he was someone who basically had an immediate analysis and also someone who looked into like sociology and everything. Okay. Uh, he had he had a couple different basic principles that we kind of just glossed over during the during lecture the lecture when it happened. Um. First off, first off is basically he believed that in order to understand the influence of media as just kind of like a concept, we need to focus on on ways that each new form of medium pretty much disrupts tradition and reshapes social life as a whole, which in itself is a bit of an interesting thing to see. And I kind of decided, hey, video games have kind of done that, done quite a bit of that. Oh, for sure. Hell. I agree. Video games are super influential on how all other different mediums have been have been utilized. I mean, in particular, like as a writer, um, the the art of the novel is kind of dead, unfortunately, which means that, you know, a lot of writers have had to turn to, you know, various other mediums. I, in particular, have taken a lot of inspiration from video games, and I've been trying to figure out ways to make my writing more interactive with with my audience. So I totally agree that that video games have absolutely pushed um, the medium of storytelling forward, for sure. Yeah, and we're just going to go ahead and look into, like, how that's basically happened over years. We'll get into that once we get into, like, the later generations of gaming. Gotcha. Um, second part of that is basically the message in regards to, like, whatever is being shown in your media isn't necessarily the content itself, but rather how it basically extends our senses and alters our social world. So like, like let's say for like radio, basically, Hey, it would radio basically ended up pretty much going for the auditory kind of approach for pretty much, we're pretty much trying to, exploit people trying to use like the media and such while when beforehand we pretty much had like had i believe moot had like books and such or print media pretty much acting as like a more visual aspect kind of thing Mm -hmm. and then once we ended up going into like the age of tv tv and video we end up Ends up combining, bringing in audio, but also ends up bringing back stuff regarding like the visual aspects of media being shown off and everything. Mm-hmm. And on the lines of like, um, with new forms of technology as they kind of get introduced over the years, basically it's meant to, that technology in itself is pretty much meant to rework the balance of our senses. 
isolating and highlighting certain senses over others. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of got like basic notes over here on like how some of this stuff goes on. For the most part, video games kind of did its own thing and it stays pretty consistent with how it, with like what scent particular senses are kind of being enhanced mm -hmm. overall. And mm -hmm. so, simple thing, simple thing to kind of remember the media, one mess thing that he basically emphasized during his teachings and some of his interviews is basically the medium itself is telling the me is the message not necessarily what is being shown to you or like what games are or in this case like what the video games themselves as a medium are the or whatever message you want to try and go ahead and convey not the content in it mm -hmm. okay, okay so I, I agree with that i think that's very interesting actually mm -hmm. yeah it's a very interesting been a very interesting class. Um, all right, so go ahead and start with like how we're gonna get, go ahead and start all the way back at the very beginning of video games altogether, and to kind of analyze, kind of keep things organized with this, uh, we ended up learning also about the about McLuhan's quad. Uh, it's like a, it's kind of like a, like four different things you kind of look forward to when analyzing it. How the media, how the medium itself, and what the medium itself is enhancing. Like what senses are, what way are they trying to enhance your senses? What is, was made obsolete with the introduction of this, of this new form of medium? Uh, with, as we're kind of going on with generations, um... What is what is further pretty much retrieved from the past and brought on over here as a means of trying to bring that was once obsolete and is being brought on over here, and the last part being the reverse of it, in a sense like how the media itself ends up getting, ends up breaking down under pressure, which and so. This is pretty interesting. It's something I kind of ended up finding over the course of a lot of this stuff. Cool. Uh, so we kind of start, kind of go ahead, and start things off with like first generation gaming. Now, this is basically like the really old school kind of games, like even before like Atari. You pretty much only had like two forms of games with like Pong or another cut. Technically, like one of the first consoles, the Magnavox Odyssey, which, from my from my looking at what I remember from seeing it from like an eight a angry video game nerd episode where we covered this, mm -hmm. it basic it's basically like you would pretty much set this system to like different settings and such. Uh, you would pretty you would still have to like put like a little filter onto your screen to kind of mimic like having the game and such. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it is. It, that was very probably as primitive as it got, and it even came with like a little light gun type thing where it was like an act. It was shaped, modeled to be like an actual shotgun. I see. That's cool. Uh, awesome. Uh, the other thing was basically just pong, and not that was just about as simple as it gets. Not just the game, but it was pretty much game itself, but. Which was basically flying, which was in the arcade like hotcakes. Eventually, mm -hmm. once you get the stuff to go into home console, home and stuff, there were there were apparently a whole bunch of different pong consoles that were pretty much being made. Like everyone was pretty much making like their own version of pong. Mm -hmm. So we kind of just see like where the reverse ends up happening here, happening here with the only thing basically being pong. Or you're messing around with like a Magnavox Odyssey, which I'm pretty sure was like pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. Um, for the first couple generations, I wouldn't say that. I'm honestly going to say that there isn't really much that's really being retrieved at this time. Uh, but what is kind of enhanced, I would personally just say like bringing in the visual aspects and. Also, maybe some auditory stuff going on with bringing it with like 
bring it in games as a whole. Yeah, I'd say potentially some audio, but it probably is less. It probably I don't want to say accounts less, but it's probably less intense than it did get further along. I think oh, at yeah. this point in video game development, the visual was probably the main element of it. And also just trying to get things to work besides mm-hmm. just and everything. And I would personally say what was made obsolete at the time is interesting. I would say kind of like traditional board games that probably going and going outside and playing games out (laughs) anything that basic games that weren't electronic basically got made obsolete during this era i think it's i think it's really funny though how technically some things can be made obsolete and yet even if they aren't the common go-to anymore that um it's things like that still exist like i'm i'm sure you'll probably talk about in in the future how like different how uh video games made older video games obsolete and yet there's still this really big indie revolution of doing those old styles again mm-hmm. uh in a sense kind of like in a sense with kind of the rise of video games it's sort of like that song like video killed the radio star in that sense like mm-hmm. we still got radio radio talk shows and stuff going on it's just it wasn't a big thing anymore yeah mm-hmm it's just it just wasn't anywhere near prevalent as like MTV just sitting on turn on TV just have music videos playing the entire time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there isn't really much to talk about with the first generation of game, but second generation once we get on over here is like the real rise in video games as kind of as kind of you know, because at this point video games are still seen as just Kind of like a fad, kind of like a fad, like anything else that was going on in like the eighties at the time. Mm-hmm. And we all kind of, I think, palm everything regarding this first generation out the window <laughs> because Atari, because the age of Atari and and basically the arcade experience kind of starts around here. Um, Atari was based itself with. Honestly, I would say this is also the part where they start like enhancing stuff visually, mm-hmm. trying to at least get like better stuff going on. Like you can kind of tell it's not just like it's not shapes point. anymore. Yeah, <laughs> we got like we got like all these shapes going on. Like you can kind of tell like if you're playing a game, it's like yeah, see, look, there's a little guy over there mm-hmm. playing as him and, and jumping around. And I think that's also like a crocodile or a snake or something. <laughs> And it's just like very basic six bit gaming going on right now. And at the time, there was also ColecoVision and the Intellivision, which both were kind of the same cons, kind of the same thing going on. But Atari was still basically the king here. Nothing is nothing is retrieved. This is still basically like primitive gaming, like the age of fire, per se. Mm hmm. And what ends up killing this, what ends up killing this generation altogether kind of came from the whole thing of like, like another part with like everything being back in the day and stuff with video games, because you you pretty much end up having an entire thing going on with like lackluster video games. Like a lot of games back in the day, they're pretty crappy, pretty much Mm -hmm. crap. And you would also it was either crap original games, kind of like E.T. or something, E.T. like or Halloween. E.T. is the game who infamously almost killed the video game industry. Yeah, a bit of a weird that in itself has its own entire story going on, where it was like the guy pretty much had like six months to program E.T. an E.T. video game before Christmas. It was six. It was six weeks that. The guy had to pretty much get, really? get a game pumped out. Wow. Yeah, and I think the only other game that killed it, at, if it, if you're not basically trying to make your own original game, which if it isn't, which was probably mostly like, if it wasn't like Space Invaders or something like that, then it's kind of going to be very lackluster considering like hardware limitations at the time. It was basically also going to be watered-down versions of arcade games. 
particularly infamous being like Pac-Man on the Atari 2600. Which, if you kind of see, if you end up seeing stuff for that, it does not look good at all. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Yeah, and then with the whole thing of regarding like E.T. and crap games coming out, it pretty much seemed like video games were going to go go down as pretty much just another fad at Until people into the tune. A little company named Nintendo came along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nintendo in itself is basically the people who pretty much just jump start basically went ahead and revived the entire game industry single-handedly, mind you. Technically two games with the NES Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, they brought back the gaming scene, I think, in the arcades through Donkey Kong. But the real big thing was pretty much Super Mario Bros. as, in, as a whole. Mm. Like, we're going, but like, at this point, Nintendo is basically the forefront for bringing in new game, game systems and stuff. It's pretty mm. much like, now we're, it may not be too much of a jump. It's a, I wouldn't consider it too much of a jump graphically. Uh, it's just like good enough to where it's an it's pretty much a big improvement from the Atari era. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd argue that games didn't actually start to look decent until the SNES era. <laughs> and I think what was retrieved here is trying to bring back some of the physical aspects of play, per se, because I kind of decided to also add in, like, the physical aspects, the physical, the physical kind of senses kind of thing with, like, actually moving and stuff. They bring back, like, like, you know, the old NES light zap, like the NES gun that kind of goes there with, like, Duck Hunt and whatever other games came on there that used that, but Nintendo ended up getting, like, a whole bunch of different, like, sort of accessories going on i think more infamously more famously is basically like infamously is pretty much the power glove that they had where they were trying to like do motion controls and trying to start off with motion controls that didn't and as a first experiment it was a mixed bag mm -hmm. and it's kind of weird like being able to do like punch out but you only have like one glove with motion controls that barely work um, and I think the only other thing that's worth mentioning is kind of like they had like a little exercise type pad that they were basically using mm -hmm. at the time. And mm -hmm. I think that famously ended up going to something with, with a whole bunch of games with like the Olympics and stuff. You could play with a controller, but a lot of people just kind of went ahead and play would kind of just play with the mat that kind of came with it. It was like one of those old style, like plastic dance, dance revolution style mats. Mm -hmm. And I think more famously, it was, I think anyone who kind of played that remembers like doing the whole thing with like sprinting and everything, where it would basically just like, where everyone would basically be trying to beat each other in that one game. And you would pretty much be, like, running in place really quickly, wondering if the controls are even working. And then at some point, you're just like, screw this! And then you, like, get on your knees trying to mash the button, cheat and mash the buttons with, like, your hands and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like, this is basically uh, what's in, outside of enhancements. Um, a lot of the simplistic stuff that kind of came here, came with the previous generation, out the window, kind of. Atari is still kind of kicking around there in here, trying to do their own con, still trying to bring like better versions of Atari consoles, but it just isn't the same. They just weren't anywhere near as relevant. And I think that Sega was also a also kind of also rising at the time. They had their own system going on, but we kind of, uh, that isn't really where they didn't start really rising into power until for a while until like next generation afterwards mm -hmm. um yeah they were they were kind of the big competition for the snes if i remember correctly oh yeah and kind of going at the end tail end of this i think people were definitely looking for like better hardware experiences 
better hardware to play on ex- and an enhanced experience to where it was basically like we want something like more brand new and Sega was kind of around at the time released the releasing the Sega Genesis close to the end of here and that was just like whoa this is awesome this is awesome look at the graphics on this it's 16 bit mm-hmm. well what the hell does 16 bit mean <laughs> i don't know but it, it looks good it looks good and and it's also got like this funky little hedgehog over here and it's got some crazy gameplay going on let's yeah. get that yeah and that is when we start making the jump on over to fourth generation gaming kind of calling this we kind of know this era as pretty much the console wars mm-hmm. not just because of like Nintendo and Sega pretty much fighting it out. Nintendo coming out with like the Super Nintendo, I think at some point after the Genesis had been out for a while. This is pretty much where a lot of game video games start getting like experimental and stuff and pretty much getting like sort of a renaissance renaissance during the 16th era where people mm-hmm. really started experimenting and stuff. Um was obviously made made obsolete. The previous 8-bit generation for a good while was pretty much just kind of tossed out, but if you were a kid at the time and you kind of saw, like, there was a Super Nintendo, unless you didn't own, like, the old NES at the time, parents were just going to be like, it's another Nintendo system. What do you need that for? You already got a good one right over here. Um, and... I would also say that with this generation, you're not just having like this whole fight going on with Nintendo and Sega. You got like all different. You kind of also looking like game consoles that came out around the time. There's a whole bunch of different things with like varying degrees of success to them that were pretty much trying to be the third one, that mm-hmm. third company that basically oh, yeah. go that can basically go toe to toe with Sega and Nintendo. Because it was kind of the Wild West at this point, because the, we didn't have the three established consoles that we do nowadays. I mean, Sega was there and Nintendo was obviously there, but like, yeah, um, there's a lot of other space for in- experimentation and stuff. This was basically, I would kind of say that with that kind of with like where it was going, Atari was, this is basically a generation where Atari dies out with the Jaguar. We kind of know where that went. Um, we had, I think, a couple other consoles. There was the Philips CDI that had happened at the time. I think, I'm not sure if Microsoft, the Microsoft for Apple's console, the Apple Pippin, was out at the time. Yeah, I think that's like late 90s that came out before the next fifth generation gaming. But... Everyone was basically trying to make their own console. Uh, the 3DO, there's the 3DO, which was mainly just like they're having like interactive movie type games. And nobody was really, nobody was really around to give, give Sega or Nintendo a run for their money, despite there being some consoles with some pretty good games on there overall. Mm-hmm. And also during this time, I would kind of also add. Pretty much the portable add-on here with what is enhanced, um, a portable aspect of video games as a media, because you pretty much back in the day it was pretty for a good while it was pretty much you either have a console at home or you pretty much got yourself going down to the arcade with a fistful of coins to <laughs> go ahead and play play Pac-Man or Street Fighter. I'm kind of glad I missed those days. <laughs> um and. Another thing that was, honestly, that's another point that was kind of retrieved on over from the past, and that's basically bringing the arcade experience at home, because kind of remember, like, Street Fighter being one of the big games that everyone was porting onto all the game consoles and stuff. Like, you gotta have, gotta at least have some version of, some version of Street Fighter on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're, not a, you're not a real console unless you've got Street Fighter. Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, you gotta have you gotta have all these different arcade games brought onto here. 
And for the most part, they all pretty much they pretty much ended up working pretty fine to some degree. Um, and the other thing being portable games, because not only being brought here, but brought it brought back, but also pretty much enhanced altogether with this generation. Because the only portable video games you're playing back in the day before like the Game Boy come or like Sega's the Sega Game Gear. You're pretty much like stuck with those crappy Tiger Electronic games. You kind of remember that stuff, <laughs> where it's yes, like, I do. or like the Game and Watch games with Nintendo, but it's mainly Tiger Electronics. We at least we've at least at least played like one of these things. When at least some of us have played one of these. It's if probably not-, not exactly Tiger, but I certainly remember when I was a kid. Um, the the DS and stuff had already come out for the most part. Um, and the Game Boy when I was very young, but my parents were really cheap and would not get me any consoles because until recently, my mother did not see uh, the point of video games. Um, but I do remember they got me a tiny little portable basic thing that played Pac-Man. Oh, <laughs> Tiger Electronic style Pac-Man. Yeah, mm-hmm. I remember having a couple of these. Uh, there was like one for like for some crappy... Elmo type game. I think I, I think I still had up until my little brother had gotten born. That was still working. There was one that had released with like Sonic Sonic and McDonald's at the time, where it's like one of those little crappy, one of those really poorly poorly done budget games that you would pretty much have. That would basically like barely even bigger than your hand. Mm-hmm. And the other one was pretty much like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game that was also in the same style, but done by Konami that was at my grandma's house that if I didn't have my DS, I'd basically go ahead and sneak in, sneak in to play that, <laughs> even if I was in trouble. Because it, it was just... And my dad, who's basically kind of the gamer of the family, was just like, ah, let the, guy, let the kid play it. He's not going... This one just one of those crappy Tiger Electronic games. No one's gonna really. It's not not even a real video game. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh. Game Boy kind of comes around. Nintendo. That's pretty much how Nintendo ends up dominating like handheld gaming altogether. And mm-hmm. kind of just going through like all the other generations. It's like a slow, a bit of a quicker evolution. With like getting portable games working just fine. And honestly, what kind of ends up ending this generation once again is more just everyone actively trying to get better hardware. Because I think at some point, Sega had basically, Sega pretty much was going after like having, working on making CD, using CDs for games with the Sega CD. And then also trying to make the jump to having kind of 3D stuff going on with the 32X. Uh, Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the SNES era, they were starting to basically try to, like, almost do 3D in it. Um, Like, kind of. But then, yeah, the the next console generation was probably the biggest jump forward in terms of technology that we've ever gotten. Yeah, and honestly, you can... also, probably the reason why, for the longest time, Star Fox 2 never really happened. Because if you have, like, the Super Nintendo Mini or, like, the Nintendo Switch Online now, I think that has Star Fox 2 on it. Both mm-hmm. of them have Star Fox 2. Um, you kind of get to see, like, the Super Nintendo is basically being pushed at its absolute limit trying to make, like, actual, th- what is essentially an actual... Th- Closest thing they got to like an actual 3D type game mm-hmm. that's going on at the time. It's really cool to see though, but back in back then, it was just trying to just having like the whole whoa 3D effects going on. <laughs> and they also have like the Virtual Boy as well, which isn't really like virtual technology, but more like stereoscopic 3D in red and black mm-hmm. that basically gave you headaches. Mm-hmm. I, I think one of my family mem one of my family members on my mom's side had a virtual boy at one point too. Oh, mm-hmm. oh yeah. Um, uh, but 
Why don't we go ahead and make the jump on over to like fifth generation? Um, I believe that with on the lines with Sega going on at the time, I think the only thing they had out at the time was the Sega Saturn, which was more apparently more like a 32 bit console. And I think that was like a Japanese exclusive type thing. And it wasn't even sold that much in America. And, uh, and like, the Sega Dreamcast kind of being its own, their last console, it just didn't last perform one. well. It did it not. Wasn't, it just didn't perform well, but it was pretty good for the lines of, like, getting us 3D games at the time. Mm -hmm. I, but, I have a hypothesis that what it was probably was that at the time Sega had Sonic, um, and maybe a couple of other more mature, like, titles, but, like, the big titles were Zelda and Mario, and Nintendo had both of them. So, yeah. yeah there was also some other stuff that of Sega course, also yeah. had. Um, I think the only other thing, not sure if that came out, but it was a 3D Echo to Dolphin game, which... Come on, no one really cares about Echo to Dolphin. <laughs> we all they like ourselves. We're a Sega. Fit. If you were, if you're over here playing Sega, you only know stuff like Sonic the Hedgehog. Mm -hmm. And at the time, that's and maybe even Knights, but that was still basically an obscure as all hell Sega game at the time. But even then, it's just like Sega just doesn't have much. And at the time with and I think the first big one that came out before the Dreamcast was the PlayStation. Sony coming in here as the big 3D gaming juggernaut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, dude, like Sony came out swinging with the original PlayStation. Like, there's still a lot of really iconic games on that console. You know, do you also know the whole story regarding like the PlayStation and early development stuff? It I was do a not know. So, okay, this is actually a really cool story that kind of leaves like a whole thing of what if, if this ended up happening, but Nintendo and Sony were apparently te teaming up back in the day to pretty much release like the PlayStation at the time. So mm -hmm. we could have had like more, we could have had pretty much had like Mario on and all the PlayStation characters all together pretty easily if a Smash Bros. game ended up coming out in that particular timeline. Mm hmm But it was apparently due to, like, disputes going on regarding with, like, that basically went on with, like, how they wanted to put their games on. Sony wanted to pretty much go ahead and put their stuff on on CDs because of, like, memory stuff going on. Mm-hmm. While... Nintendo's like, no, we need our cartridges. Yeah, and they also kind of... And after kind of jumping ship for a while, after jumping ship after that, at that point, with Sony being like, boy, no, go ahead, do my own thing. Sony and Nintendo's just going to be like, screw you guys. We're going to work with the Philips CDI. We're going <laughs> to see how well that goes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Sony basically just crushes everything. Yep. So, they always do. They do from this point forward. Yeah, it's, so much well, that Nintendo has to gear themselves towards kids so that they're not like overstepping Sony's bounds too much. Not necessarily kids nowadays, but just doing their own thing. Mm -hmm, yeah. Um. So was kind of enhanced here from this point for for next couple of generations is basically just like the visual aspect of things, you know, with making the whole jump for 3D. Uh, and the whole problem with this generation until like. Next up is basically 3D games, basically still kind of being worked on, experimented with at the time, and still needed that fine a couple of years of like fine tuning to work. Um, uh, let's see here, was made obsolete. Well, by the end of this generation, cartridges on like game consoles and everything, along with like. Consoles that pretty much had like pseudo 3D. It's like, come on, we got actual 3D over here with, with like Final Fantasy and Tomb Raider and all Don't these forget Zelda. Crash <laughs> Zelda, Mario, Crash Bandicoot, Banjo Kazooie. All of them, all of these games are pretty much in actual 3D. What can you guys do? 
We can only do 16 bits with awesome, mind-blowing 3D effects. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and what's kind of brought on over here is kind of make... Is that even with this stuff still going on, there's still, like, 2D games still going on at the time. And what's kind of brought back from the previous era is basically... This is essentially just an evolution of making games on 3D planes altogether. A 3D plane of, like, existence, you know. And it's, honestly, it's essentially nothing too much to say outside of Nintendo kind of getting laid on the game with the Nintendo 64. Mm-hmm. That's probably the oldest console that I actively grew up on. Because I think... One of my cousins on my mom's side had a Super Nintendo, but I only had, I didn't spend that much out of, outside of just trying out Star Fox, Super Mario World, and Donkey Kong Country on there. Mm-hmm. Nintendo 64 is basically what I had grown up on, alongside the GameCube, which is where we're going to go ahead and jump on over to sixth generation, is which. At this point, it's basically the establishment of the current big three of the gaming industry, which is Nintendo, PlayStation, and Microsoft, along with kind of where 3D games really start hitting their stride with, like, all the crazy stuff that they can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd I'd argue that this generation is the one where the most experimentation happened and the most classics got made, essentially. Because we kind of just see them, like, act... It's probably the last big generation where all three companies are actively trying to one up each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nintendo cut with the GameCube. That's basically the other big one. I I think both of us have probably played on at some point with like Smash Bros or Mario Kart or any other posted games that were on there at the time. There's Zelda, Zelda, because I never really. Or Legend of Zelda at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, GameCube pretty much be GameCube basically gave us like all the big classics, a lot of big classics that we remember. But they just ended up getting squashed by Microsoft and PlayStation. Mm-hmm. So with, because we had the Xbox that came around. Um, with the whole whole previous generation kind of getting tossed out the window. We basically end up pretty much having like all sorts of different innovations going on with with 3D games and yeah. Speaking, also, unfortunately, before you move on, speaking of throwing things out the window, um, the video game industry is notorious for really not doing a good job of preserving their history. Um, so, like that's why emulation is and pirating is such a big thing because a lot of these old games it is literally impossible to play them unless you have the original console and game, which are no longer in print for the most part. So they sometimes cost like hundreds of dollars. So oh yeah, yeah. Espe- especially with GameCube, like you see mm-hmm. some of the prices that are going on for GameCube. They cost it. Some of the lower end ones tend to cost about as much as like the regular your average sixty dollar game. Mm-hmm. And I've seen on Amazon that is like sometimes a copy of Smash Bros. Melee or Paper Mario ends up costing like eighty to a hundred dollars. Like uh-huh. that's ridiculous. It's pretty crazy. So that's why I decided to just go ahead and switch to emulation because screw having to buy that stuff. And which is a shame. It really is a shame. Um, GameCube. It's I think its own real innovation was just like. Where we just got a more portable game console. We got a handle on the back of ours. And you can hook up your Game Boy Advance to it. Oh. Um, Microsoft kind of going in with the Xbox. I would honestly say here that what is brought in, this is basically where like the real, real evolution to like online gaming with consoles ends up starting in because we end up having like LAN even with the GameCube. GameCube is basically like you would have to hook up to a LAN network, LAN network to pretty much just like do online any sort of online stuff. Microsoft, it was just like just straight up hook yourself up to the internet. You could play some online Halo on here. 
mm-hmm. and even like download some stuff as well. Um, PlayStation. This is basically the big console that my dad basically had going into college because it was basically both a regular video game console and a DVD player. Mm-hmm. That's basically the big thing. I would say that is also pretty much brought back from previous technology itself. Because having a regular DVD player is pretty expensive. And PlayStation 2 just kind of sold like hotcakes because it was both a cool video game console with all the... Now, was, I think was also graphically superior compared to everything else at times. And... It was also, and if you didn't want to play video games, just have it as a DVD player. Yeah, this was kind of the start of the video game consoles becoming more like multimedia devices. Because, like, yeah. um, Drag on my, my boyfriend, for those of you who are unaware, um, has an Xbox that we only use to watch Hulu and Netflix on because, and YouTube, because, uh, there's no games on it either of us really like to play. We usually play games on our computers. So <laughs> we literally just use it to watch Hulu and Netflix on it. Yeah, and I would honestly say that this is also... that There's honestly a lot of stuff that gets added on to this generation. I think what ends up becoming a mandatory thing by this point is basically having save data. Mandatory mm-hmm. like save data and save files on pretty much all the games at this point. Because, like, during the Nintendo 64 days, I don't even think that... I think that they were still trying to implement that stuff onto all their games. With, like, PlayStation and... PlayStation, Stega, and Nintendo at the time, but... It was just kind of like... Some of those games just didn't have save data because it was, like, just a port of an arcade game onto consoles. Yeah, this is kind of the point where home consoles really for the final time kind of overtook uh, arcades and arcade games are now kind of a novelty versus like the standard. And it's also the point where we start really getting like complex storytelling and stuff from a lot of, with all of this stuff. It's not like even like trying to have like these games be like movies, movies at some points. It's just like there are some stories here that with video games at this point that could only really be told through video games, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, you couldn't really make like a Shadow of the Colossus type game or Legend of Zelda into a movie. Into mm-hmm. a movie. And it could People only really... People have tried. <laughs> well, not really tried with like Legend of Zelda yet. Of course. I'm sure it's probably only a matter of time, though. Unless unless Nintendo... I mean, yeah, Nintendo just let Illumination do Mario now, so... Uh, well, can't Chris- wait for the... Yeah, can't wait for the Illumination Zelda. I will die. Honestly, I don't think it's... I don't think it's gonna, they're going to do Illumination for a Zelda game. For a Zelda movie. I didn't it's- think they'd do one for a Mario movie. They have to start somewhere with Mario, though. That's fair. Um, and they at least did a decent job with a live-action Pokemon and yes, live-action Sonic. No, yes. Detective Pikachu is actually a very good movie. Pretty good. Um, Honestly, compared to like other video game movies I've seen, it still doesn't top the old Mortal Kombat movie. That's fair. Um, Yeah, I think the only thing that really ended up heating up the... Com- heating up the- this generation as a media was pretty much just competition between the big three. With mm-hmm. PlayStation still kind of dominating as a whole, Nintendo also kind of wavering in popularity during this time with GameCube mm-hmm. and all their stuff is just like, how are they going to bounce back with everything afterwards? Go ahead and switch on over to next generation because previous generation of consoles, once again, out the window, and that's Pretty much what's made up, what's made kind of obsolete, but the window of what's more obsolete compared to the last generation kind of gets smaller by this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, once again, the visual, visual, physical, visual and portable aspects of games 
they're pretty much there still they're getting enhanced here with like with graph not all with PlayStation and Xbox kind of being the only two actively competing with each other. Nintendo just kind of goes at this point just kind of goes ahead does their own thing. And surprisingly from what I've seen they also I've also decided to add the physical aspect here. They bring back motion controls uh-huh. from like way back. Uh-huh. That's what we're bringing back from the past. And the Wii ends up coming out. It is an absolute success. And it's pretty much that one console that you can at least expect everyone to have if they don't have, like, PlayStation or an Xbox. You gotta at least have the Wii, man. Mm-hmm. I had a and Wii. It was the only console every- my parents ever bought me, was a Wii. Everyone has a Wii. Even even my grandparents had... Even grandparents and old school, old people places pretty much have had a Wii. I think mm-hmm. even the old YMCA I went to as a kid at this around this time had a Wii at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the same time, they're also domin- they even further dominate the handheld market with the Nintendo DS, which. I think considering that I don't I'm pretty sure that you at least you didn't have a DS at the time either. I eventually bought myself a DS. Ooh. Um but probably not until I think I was about 13. Yeah. So by that point the 3DS was already coming out, but there were a lot of old DS games I had wanted to play, so I got a DS. Oh yeah. Um little it wasn't even a DSi, it was just a DS Lite. <laughs> Yeah, here's a story with my family and the DS and stuff. Kind of a short history. Um, my no- my older brother, Noah, he ended up getting a DS. At- he was the first one to get a DS, followed by me. Mm-hmm. We both had the new Pokemon game. I think I was stuck with my old Game Boy at the time, but he kind of took that, but eventually just gave it back in recent years. Gave it back to me in recent years, just being like, here you go, dude. Mm-hmm. Um... Older brother ends up getting in big trouble, gets his DS smashed with a hammer. Oh no. As punishment. Like he got in, he got in big trouble. Um I don't remember what happened with my DS though. I still had it for a good while. And my older brother, he ended up he ended up actually getting not one, but two versions of the DSI when like Heart Golden Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver were out. Um that entire that entire story is a bit interesting as well because he pretty much got that at like won both of them at like that arcade stacking game that you kind of see in all different arcades nowadays. Mm-hmm. Won two games of that and ended up getting both of them, both copies of the game and an extra D yet with that as well. Mm-hmm. Um. And then I just ended up getting like a DSi XL when it came out. And I was eventually the guy who ended up getting the 3DS back in Christmas of 2011, which also gave me my first experience of Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Mm -hmm. At least the 3D remake, though. I I still think it's sad. I like the original better. I wish that they had given it like a full like big console release instead of just kind of shoving it onto the 3DS, but all right. The 3D effect stuff on there is still pretty cool. That's fair. I don't know. It feels more like a gimmick to me, but eh, what do you, what do I know? Um, but yeah, kind of going back onto topic here though. The Wii pretty much just making games we pretty much had got super popular with just Making having motion controls with all their games pretty much to where it's pretty much like even even Microsoft and Nintendo had to look at stuff and be like, we gotta get bank on that. Yeah, because the Xbox made the Kinect. Uh, my uncle used to work for Microsoft, so oh. they were some of the first people who got a Kinect. So I played with my cousin and my uncle on that a lot. And of course, PlayStation did PlayStation Move, right? Which was like a we which was looked like a weird. Like a weird Wii remote, but it had like a fluffy, like a squish, like a squishy plastic ball thing on the end. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, you can kind of see which ones ended up, 
which one was kind of more successful over the other. Mm-hmm. Connect when it worked, when people actually had competent people making games on it, it does work. It was pretty fun. I liked. Um, I played a lot of Dance Central on it. It was pretty fun. Um, I had a friend. I had a friend in high school. We ended up trying out um, the old Connect Star Wars Connect game that's on there. Gotcha. Lots of hilarity to kind of go there, especially with like the Dance Dance Revolution mini game on there. Mm-hmm. Um, we also kind of. There's also a whole bunch of other stuff that comes in. Um, Nintendo, on the portable side of things, is kind of where we have, like, the whole jump with, like, 16-bit and 64-bit games coming onto here, onto, onto, like, portable consoles at the time with, like, the DS happening. And I think with the whole rivalry going on with PlayStation and... Microsoft, there was also like the improvement in graphics and everything. And Sony kind of ended up, Sony ended up pooping out very early on. Um, and Microsoft just kind of had a pretty steady lead over the years with this generation. And Sony just only managed to at least beat them out at the end because they started releasing good games like. I Got would argue, yeah, I would argue in the next one, Sony ends up beating Microsoft simply because they got a lot of really good exclusive games. Yeah, it's a bit of a weird thing with eighth generation games. And but the other big thing I want to say that really ends up being made into a standard at this point is pretty much downloadable. That is also brought back from way in the past when Sega was also was kind of experimenting with this. Downloadable games. Downloadable games and downloadable content all together. Mm-hmm. And I also believe think that Nintendo with the virtual console stuff, they pretty much bring back all their old titles and have them on that, have them on something that you can just go ahead, download onto your console as long as you got the room for it. And you got all your old classic games on here, man. Mm-hmm. And the only really the only thing that really ended up ended up basically overheating this medium this time around was basically just the eventual decline, you know. I think by the end of that by the end of everything, it was just like Sony kind of just pooped out at the end with with PS3 with a sense they only at the end it was just like releasing actually good games like The Last of Us and God of and God of War, I think Uncharted as well. Mm-hmm. And as a quick mention, they were also trying to do their own thing with with trying to outdo Nintendo in the handheld market. And it had mixed results, but ultimately they kind of poop out as well. Mm-hmm. And Xbox just kind of does its own. It's just kind of doing its own thing, waiting for the next Xbox to come out. And we pretty much ends up just becoming an entire cesspool of weird hidden gems and weird hidden not weird hidden, so gems. <laughs> no, nah, just like shovelware games, you know. Mm-hmm. And we eventually just get on over to eighth generation, which we can just go ahead and say Sony won on pretty much the game aspect Sony. of everything. Sony won on most things. Nintendo had the Wii U, which was one of their worst consoles ever. Uh, I was I am a proud Wii U owner, so I can at least say they did a decent. The games that they did release that I actually got went ahead and got, they did a pretty good job with like their exclusives. I heard Zombie U wasn't bad, but yeah, but overall there was not a lot of support for it. There were not a lot of good games on it. It, it as was a console e- was kind of... Eh. It was just kind of... I think the whole thing was like... It was confusing early on with some people where it's like... Is this a new console? Is is this going to be an add-on to the Wii? Mm-hmm. And... Honestly, I still like it. Um, I still wonder early on whatever happened to... That one Zelda game that they had shown as like a tech demo type thing. 
They were mm-hmm. like that whole little showcase where it was like styled in like Twilight Princess. Mm-hmm. And it looked pretty cool, but we the Zelda game we did eventually get by the end of this generation shaped out to be pretty shaped out to be one of their best. Mm-hmm. Um real competition here ends up coming in from like Sony and Sony and Microsoft just doing each other out because the Wii U is like no one really cares about the Wii U. Uh, Nintendo was also also has the 3DS, so they were also kind of make working on portable gaming as well, There's like improving stuff there as well, stuff on there. But uh, yeah, the whole the whole thing with like Sony and Microsoft with the Xbox at the time is just it's weird to say the least with how that worked because. We end up getting because it's like on one hand, Sony did a good job, did a really good job this mm-hmm. in that previous generation, as you can tell. Um, I think they also ended up and they were also basically just like being consistently strong throughout. Well, Xbox basically just had a really rocky start with like not even knowing what they wanted to do with their next console. Is like it just wanted to be everything for a good while. Um, kind of going to the whole thing of like what is kind of brought back here. PC gaming, also, I would say during this generation in particular, Came was back. when it nah, it was when it was really trying to actually be good, actually trying to do good stuff. Like, I would argue that PC gaming had always kind of been a thing, with maybe the exception of the mid two thousands, um, but it was a lot more niche and a lot more uh, underground than consoles were until the last probably five to you know seven years, because uh, people oh, finally uh, realized that you could play most anything on it. <laughs> and that's when everything started getting put up to PC, mm-hmm. and that's when we basically had like the mystical fourth. The whole mystical fourth fourth general group of gamers. Mm-hmm. If you're not an Xbox, PlayStation, or Nintendo boy, you're playing on or over here on on PC. It was the and, birth of the PC gamer master race. Um. Yeah. Sure. And I would also say that it's also during this generation. We'll toss Sony in here as well. That they were also actively working on. VR game, actually doing virtual reality stuff. I am, I have not been able to get my hands on like any sort of like virtual headsets. But uh, from what I have heard, virtual reality gaming is pretty crazy, especially like the leaps in technology they made over the past couple years. Mm-hmm. Have you tried been able to try that out yourself? Um, I haven't really, no. Well, but, um, I would also say the other thing that was kind of brought on here, back here, was the whole thing with, like, 8-bit and 16-bit games also coming back into popularity altogether. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And also, people also just independently made games also coming bit, coming here as, like, the norm. Becoming a normal thing, you know? Like, Small time companies that small time companies go ahead and make their own games and stuff. Mm-hmm. And here it's at least a lot more well polished and everything to some to varying degrees. To like, yeah, at least have a decent little hidden gem here and there to some of these indie games basically being absolute masterpieces compared to like. Anything that Sony or Nintendo, even Nintendo, were pumping out during that during this time. Mm-hmm. Oh man, Sony kind of and Xbox kind of ends up going through a weird transformation because their biggest innovation pretty much came with pretty near the end, near the last couple of years was pretty much just we gotta go ahead and make it make it this an Xbox that everyone can play on, mm-hmm. and the whole introduction of like. And with the Xbox Game Pass in itself is a pretty crazy thing. With them also bringing in the whole thing of being able to just rent games all together and playing it through the cloud. Mm-hmm. 
is like I think it's like fifteen dollars a month. You get an ac- you get a massive catalog of like ma- of like hundreds of different games that are on there. Play them anytime you want. Play them anytime you want. If you decide you want to go buy one, it's pretty much going. You get one at like a discount or something, get like a discount, and mm-hmm. boom, the game's yours. You also get to keep whatever save data was there when you were renting it, and it's absolutely, it's actually pretty revolutionary to being able to have streaming games, stream mm-hmm. games and such. Yep, yeah, PlayStation's got a similar thing. It's not quite as extensive, but it's called PS Now. I've I played Bloodborne and a couple other games through it. It's pretty cool. Oh yeah, um, uh, it's just like. Xbox basically revolute. I would say the last thing here that was kind of brought thanks to Xbox was the whole thing of like renting video games and stuff from here. Kind of like what you would do with like Blockbuster, if anyone remember anyone remembers going there when that was a thing. Oh, Blockbuster. Oh yeah, and. Also, I would say that the only thing that kind of really started burning out people, include even kind of going into this current generation, which in itself is kind of still in an infancy, kind of in a toddler state right now, or so, is basically just like more questionable decisions that are pretty much coming from game companies themselves, not just like the big three, but people making games as well with like mm-hmm. what like the whole rise of pretty much making games into microtransaction type things that <sighs> you're very much made pretty much you gotta pay me all this money if you want to get this i mean or, it's a way to monetize things i disagree with it but you do you i guess uh, i'm not uh, entirely free of sin i play genshin impact and i have spent some money on it you <laughs> you get your impacts. Oh, it's a good game, actually. I quite like it. Yeah. Yeah, I stick with my own mobile gotcha game that I play with Marvel superheroes in it. Gotcha. That's actually fun. Gotcha. Uh, kind of going in, uh, honestly, by the end of things, I would say that at this point, with like the current generation of gaming... We basically have Xbox kind of, Xbox and PlayStation. They're both kind of just at this point they're just doing their own things right now. And Nintendo, I would kind of count this ge- as the start of that generation. Current generation we're in with like the Nintendo Switch basically being the antithesis of everything that's going on. Uh, like the whole thing of we're all basically competing against each other. Nintendo's just like Here's a here's something that's both a console and a portable system, mm-hmm. and we got and we also have like Smash Bros and all of our other cool games on here. Have fun, kids. Mm-hmm. And Sony and, and Xbox is over here, pretty much like working on trying to revolutionize Game Pass and all their other stuff. They don't have any like decent exclusives, but. They're working hard, and Sony's just kind of sitting there and derpy, like, what the hell happened here, man? It's just like, they used to actually have me trying to compete against each other, and uh, now you're both just doing your own things. Mm -hmm. What happened, man? I thought we had a thing going on. Uh Uh-huh. From what I can tell so far, what I can tell so far, there was definitely a jump in, like, Trying to bring back cloud gaming and a lot of games, game stuff basically being like subscription based services. I think with like Google coming out with the Stadia, I think one or two years back, that was, from what I heard, that was a pretty bad. That pretty, was uh, kind of a flop, yeah. <laughs> it was an abysmal failure from what I've heard. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately. And uh, the only real thing that's kind of getting. That's kind of added here is pretty much the visual aspect of things. And to say that the whole thing of the previous generation of consoles being abandoned, eh, yes, but also a bit of no, not really, but 
as we move on and forward, there's less advances that can be made per console generation, so it's kind of harder because there's only so good you can get a game to look. Until yeah, it look, looks real. <laughs> yeah, and as someone who pretty much over here ends up owning like an Xbox Series X, I managed to at least get one in March. At least getting lucky on that, while the shortages are still going on. Um, it's pretty much just like all the. The big thing with, like, PlayStation and Xbox is just, like, we're now 4K 60, 60 frames per second all mm-hmm. the time, no matter what. Mm-hmm. And you get to also have... And we also basically going to have our games look better. And mm-hmm. we're going to do all the sorts of different crazy innovations with everything. Mm-hmm. And it's... That's, yeah, it? that's the modern day. There it is. We did and, it. Yeah, we're... Only real thing they could probably make the jump forward to, I hear like they are capable of apparently doing 8K gaming, but from what my dad, me and my dad have kind of seen with like trying to see some of those TVs at like Best Buy and stuff, there isn't much of a difference. And yeah, at some point your eyes can't tell the difference anymore. And yeah, it's pretty much just going, I think this is in the visual aspect of things. There isn't anywhere else we can go from there. From there, if you can do like eight K, have everything in eight K, and unless we end up getting like some massive revolution in VR technology, where it ends up turning into where we can basically just have game consoles being in like Ready Player One style stuff, or what I'm personally waiting for is like. You could just go ahead, plug yourself in the Matrix for like an hour or two in the real time, but is like an entire day in in, in game and stuff. Mm-hmm. And like, um, that's the kind of stuff I want to see with like video games happening in like twenty years from now. That'd be pretty uh, cool. Because seriously, I think that's basically going. I think that future it is getting there, especially with like. Like, whatever the new thing with, like, the Oculus Rift is, apparently that's getting even that's getting even better with, like, controllers and such. Mm-hmm. But for now, we're just going to be stuck here with our Switches and Xboxes and Playstations or gaming PCs. Yeah. Or if you don't even afford that, your little phone, you're playing mobile games on there and stuff. Mm-hmm. Even that's kind of getting revolutionized. Mm-hmm. I don't even know where we can... I honestly don't even know where that stuff could go from here. You know, I don't really know. I don't think it'll ever really compete with, like, a ma- the mainstream gaming... Well, I guess it's its its own kind of market. There are a lot of people who play mobile games who don't play other games, but I don't think it will ever destroy the video game industry as we know it. Uh, honestly, the only thing that's going to destroy... that's going to end up overheating the, the video games as a media at this point is if... We end up basically if history decides to repeat itself, and we start getting crap video games from a lot of companies. But so far as it kind of seems, Nintendo's doing pretty well with trying to give, trying to serve the gamer and give us what we want, which is good games. Mm-hmm. Sony's kind of doing that for now. Uh, I think it's pretty much going to go down with like the third-party companies, pretty much like given us like different games and such to varying degrees. We got like with like Sega's still doing games nowadays. Um we got what other companies are there? Capcom and also like Rockstar Games and all the other companies pretty much like giving out games and such. Mm-hmm. Un- unless they decide unless all these companies collectively start going ahead getting lazy and stuff and We'll basically just end up end up switching on over, probably just switch on over to like PC gaming and looking towards indie com- indie game companies eventually just taking their places or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's that's where we are, I guess. Thanks for having me on this. Yeah, no problem. Um, this certainly is a this certainly is a very interesting top topic to think of with like. How far we've come with video games. Absolutely. And yeah, it's honestly really cool. So if you decide anyone who decides to go ahead and 
want to go ahead and look us up online, well, you can just go ahead and try and find me and find me on YouTube. You'll probably end up anyone else who decides to go ahead and watch it, listen to this project. You'll end up finding me there. Yep, Hedgehog. I'm, I'm pretty or, easy to find. I'm on YouTube at an extremely agitated hedgehog and online most other places at angry or hedgehog. Yeah, and I'll probably I'll go ahead and link your channel in the description below as well. So thank you very much. Just go ahead. Just go ahead. Check her stuff out. Give a nice little subscription. And because you know, you're an honest you're the honest cre- content creator. And yeah, that's pretty much the end of this whole podcast. Thanks for everyone who's listening, especially Professor. <laughs> and yeah, we'll probably much go ahead and see you anytime we pretty much decide to do another one. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you very much, everybody. And we will see you all next time.